Hi everybody, this is Rose of Sharon, and I'm back again with another book review. I just read the first John Belaris mystery featuring Louis Barnevelt, which is the house with a clock in its walls, and of course this has been made into a motion picture. And of course, the movie took a lot of creative license, but I have to say the movie was superb. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to give away some spoiler alerts here, so if you don't want to hear them, then you could click away. But uh, in the book, Lewis actually raises Mrs. Izzard from the crypt rather than Mr. Izzard, which normally, I, I mean, in all continuity and the whole mechanism of the plot itself, it's not that big of a deal, but... Mrs. Izzard, she isn't featured as manipulating him in the guise of their next door neighbors, which it leads to an interesting conclusion at the end with the house being for sale and Lewis being leery about them. And it makes sense where his fear is coming from. But <clears throat> initially the, the Chekhov's gun that leads him to actually raising, in this case, Mrs. Izzard from the grave would be Tarby's approval and friendship. And Tarby is well played and his description is spot on. Of course, in the movie, they get it right and you just, you feel really bad for Lewis. But Jonathan was absolutely perfect. Of course, Florence, Florence is, is still my favorite. She's very, very um, magnanimous and loving and <laughs> berating Jonathan, but they're like an old married couple, but in all essence, they truly do love each other, which it's not artistic license in this case because you can surmise that from the book. And there are more books in the series, and of course I had to go online to see how they fell chronologically. And I didn't know this, but the second book is about Rose. And it was meant to be a departure from Louis Barneville and more geared toward a young female um, audience. And I thought, oh, that's, that's interesting because in the movie, I absolutely love Rose. And I automatically shipped <laughs> Louis and Rose from the get-go. And I thought, oh, why do I have to ship everything? It's just such a nepeta thing for me to do, but I'm sorry, I can't help it. The homestuck within me just won't stop. It never will. Anyways, um, I really loved the book. I thought the book was fantastically written. Of course, it has that whole theme within it that's very common to Bel Air's stories, which would be the consequence of lying and just what can occur in the essence of what happens when you lie and you have to perpetuate that with yet another lie to cover another lie and then the old saying what a tangled web we believe of course that plays into view here but uh from the uh, from the immediate um instance that we actually meet lewis we we love him and we sympathize for him because of his circumstance and we all he's an underdog we want only the best for him and Jonathan of course he's also one of those characters that doesn't really fit in with society's norms and neither does Florence and I like that I like the whole <laughs> I like the whole fact that it's basically a book about misfits and then you have uh, the battle at the end when Lewis devises a way to find the clock within the walls. And, yeah, they do it in the movie, too. But the movie is much more epic than the book. The book was sort of anticlimactic. And I like the book. Don't get me wrong. I, I adore the book. It's just not silver screen phenomenal. But uh, despite that, it's still a really good pedantic tool and a cautionary tale. And in the end, Lewis... He's not, he doesn't mean to be um, 
a, a, rebel, a rebel or anything like that. He's just, uh, he wants to find a way to fit in. He wants to find a friend. And he does so in Tarby, or at least he thinks, and, and Tarby really is a jackass. But <laughs> the book, uh, not the book, but the movie also did this to a T. And I can't really say that much else about the book because it's the only um, Lewis Barnabelt that I have. I have the whole Johnny Dixon series, which I will be reviewing soon. And then the only other series I have is Anthony Monday. And I have the, uh, I think it's... The Dark Secret of Weatherend. Yeah, I have that, and I have Mansion in the Mist, which would be two out of the four books. And I'm thinking if I want to find the other um, <laughs> 11 books in the Barnabelt series, I would have to go onto eBay and get them, which eventually I will because I, I do want to own them. I do want to learn what happens to Lewis and Rose and uh, Jonathan and Florence. is because I've really come to like the characters quite a bit. And I noticed there is another theme of pipe organs. Apparently, Bel Airs really loves pipe organs because he did that in Facing the Frost. I thought, oh, running theme here. And it's interesting. If you're astute, then you think he probably incorporated that from that particular debut novel and decided, well, this worked so well for um, my main character. I'm going to have it used here with um, Jonathan. And yes, it fits into the whole retro, retro theme. Um, and I have to say, it's quite expertly written and it's got its own sense of foreboding and eeriness to it, which works so very well. And Belair's is a master of getting you on the edge of your seat, even though, yes, it's meant for kids. But yeah, it's, it's still very unnerving in spots and how horrible Izzard really is. For, because in the film... He is led to the evil way, and in the book, oh no, no, it's straight cut that he's he's evil. He's a like Jonathan says, he's a hard man. He pull his out, he pull out his own grandmother's teeth, and sell it for necromancy if he could to the devil. And he said, I thought, woo, <laughs> Izzard is no joke. But yeah, he's extremely malevolent and. It pulls no punches. With the, he doesn't sugarcoat it, and I'm glad he doesn't. He just spits it out for what it is. Um, Izzard is a sinister man, and he would he would stop at nothing to see. And and even with the confrontation, even Mrs. Izzard, yeah, they're they're real charming. <laughs> but the book does a much better job. I think the book really does a better job. But the film takes more creative liberty, which I like in a sense, because you get more of an origin on um, Izzard, and I'm glad that they did that, because even though the book didn't have that, um, the movie adds a little something extra and, and gives Izzard um, modus operandi and um, his raison d'etre, but that's basically all I have to say, and until next time, live long prosper. Ciao, tutti!